Hey, dude. <laughs> hey, nerd. Hey, nerds. <laughs> um, right off the top. Off the top rope. Disney um, killing it in the bad decision department. Okay, hit me with it. So the Wish movie. Hit me with the K money. <laughs> <laughs> so the Wish movie. Um, I haven't seen it. Yeah, me neither. Like I, I it didn't. But I got an opinion about it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. It's well, it's the premise. It's the premise behind it. Okay. So the idea was that everybody's offended because, and I say everybody because I'm not really even in that boat. I don't okay. care. But um, Alan Tudyk's in it, so I'm like, well, I'll give it a shot, right? Uh, Wish dot or Wish dot com. Uh, Wish the movie, whatever. It's Wish dot com. That's the website that you, it's like. Uh, isn't it like you order cr like cheap crap, but it's oh. like knockoff. Everything oh. is knockoff. <laughs> okay. So like you never heard that meme like the Wish dot com version of something. Mm -mm, I have not. Ugh, I'm gonna have to show it to you because it's just like it's like you order, like say you were ordering an, uh, an Aquaman figure, right? It's From the, like it's Amazon. The, it's the flea market version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's like this is like the knockoff version. So like it would show an, a figure of Aquaman, and then and, uh, the Wish dot com version is like Al Bundy with like long hair. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I no, not I'm, I'm not I, trying to knock out Bundy. I think I, I think I might like that more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, dude. You know what? If they ever made an out Bundy figure, I'd probably pick that up. You know what? I'm sure they have. We'll, we'll, we'll check have to later. look that up. Yeah. Um. Anyway, wish the wish. You want to say wish.com again? The wish movie. People are complaining because the idea behind it was the king or whoever grants wishes. Chris Pine. And he, I, I guess he grants wishes, and then the daughter finds out that you that whenever he's granting these wishes he's choosing whose wish gets granted I, I have read that yes and she wants everyone's wish to be granted okay and so i don't get why anyone cares that much about that well what is the problem that these people are having with it i'm still trying to figure it out <laughs> I, I think they're trying to compare it to like socialism or something uh, i don't know okay. dude. it's it's pretty nuts yeah i mean it makes sense pretty much you can't pretty, grant every wish. Pretty much any Disney movie that comes out, right wing media has beef with it. So, well, some stuff I feel like there's it's uh, like arguable, right? Like what? So, perfect example okay. that Snow White movie. Now you're talking about the live action one that apparently comes out in a couple of years, according to the IMDb yeah, search we just did with Rachel Zegler and who I don't uh, know. and Gal Gadot. I do know Wonder Woman. And so, okay, so, but this is what I wanted to bring up about uh, the, I don't, cause I don't care about the whole like the race swap or whatever, gender swap. I don't care about any of that. What I care is it, about. Is it race swapped or gender swapped in the new Snow White? Not gender. I think it's race. Oh, oh, you mean Snow White's not white? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so a lot of people are, it's a, it's, a, it's a little mermaid thing all over again. I don't care about that. That okay. doesn't bother me. But the part that I find funny was I watched an interview with uh, Rachel Zegler and I didn't even watch it, but YouTube recommended it and it popped up for me. Mm -hmm. And she's talking so smugly about, um, about how the prince from the Snow White story was like a stalker. And, and then she goes on to say like, and there's a prince in this movie and she gives the guy's name and she's like, yeah, but you know, I don't even know if he's going to get cut yet. So it's Hollywood, anything can happen. And I was like, well, I mean, she's not wrong. Yeah, it but was. The, but I feel like the prince does play a pretty central role in the Snow White story. Well, but, no, not really. I mean, he's the one that that wakes her up, right? Or the way that's Sleeping Beauty. That's Sleeping Beauty. Wait, what's the plot of Snow White? Snow the White dwarves, is right? she eats the poison apple and the dwarves take her. No, that's is that Sleeping Beauty? That's Snow White. And how does Sleeping Beauty go to sleep? Does she eat an apple too? No, she gets pricked by the. Doesn't she get pricked by the... Wait, am I thinking of Rumpelstiltskin? <laughs> no, dude. I thought Sleeping Beauty, she gets poked by the, the spindle or whatever. I don't remember, man. I don't remember. You're the one that played Kingdom Hearts. That's you don't a, come out of Kingdom Jen's Hearts. That's favorite movie. Well, all the princesses come out, but like neither of those two play any significant role. It would be funny if we called her on speaker right now and had her explain <laughs> yeah. the plot. Let's see, if we should, we, let's see if we can get her. Oh, I know, because I'd have to drop her, her work name. Okay. But, um, but anyway... Uh, so yeah, so like Disney has been 
losing a lot of money. People aren't going to see their movies. <clears throat> so at this Are point, they really though, losing no, yeah, a lot of money? the Wish movie, the Wish movie, they I forgot how much they said it cost to make, but it, it made nineteen million in in like its opening week. Well, that's what happened to Elemental, and then Elemental went on to make like half a billion dollars. So Elemental, yeah, that movie Elemental, Elementals elementals the one with the the fire there guy an s at the end i don't know the one well, with the fire guy there's two different movies and i can't tell the one with the fire guy <laughs> no, and the I water don't. lady and apparently it did really bad you know the first few weeks but then it it went you know it went huge later on and how's the marvels like doing? half of, oh, i don't know i haven't paid attention i don't know well i mean a good movie will definitely you know make money but I imagine that when a movie comes out and it, it, who's it appealing to and there's a bunch of negativity surrounding it, like I don't think that it's only conservatives watching these movies. You know what I mean? It just seems like like everyone's kind of getting tired. And then South Park expertly panned the Panderverse. I mean, did you, did you see all that? I have not seen it. I don't think it's on HBO anymore. I think it's so. on, isn't it on Paramount Plus? Yeah, and I don't have that, so... But I'm not, you've privy, seen, I'm not privy to the new South Parks. But have you seen like the like like anything about it? Have you seen trailers or clips? I, I did see like a YouTube thumbnail thumbnail of the of the four boys, like their girls instead. Yeah, or... they they were race and gender swap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's all Kathleen Kennedy from Disney. Who's Kathleen Kennedy? She's the one that worked for Lucasfilm. Like she was like the kind of like the one she held the reins, so to speak, whenever it transitioned over to Disney. Okay. And Lucas dipped. Okay. And um, and then I guess now she's making decisions for Disney. I don't know. Hmm. But um, so that was like the joke was make it a girl or make it gay. And every character. Well, no, I mean, I'm not keeping tabs, but I mean, I guess. Okay. <laughs> it. It's just, it's really funny to point out these observations because that's what South Park is really good at is it, it it's really good at pointing out it is really good at pointing out observations that are absurd or just not absurd but just it's the pandering I mean hell it's called the panderverse so it's like I guess there's no real problem with it but I think um, it's funny well, well I I googled when you when you first texted that you wanted to talk about this stuff i did google wish and pander to see what popped up because i really didn't know what you were talking about yeah um and most of the stuff i saw was about how the movie was trying to pander to to disney fans to that it was going to tie up it was going to bring like a disney multiverse together what was the movie wish Oh really? I didn't know that. When when I was googling it, that's what that's what I was seeing mostly. It was trying to pander to Disney fans. Kind of like Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, that it, that it ties all their movie cuz there's always been that, you know, or underground order like that underground how all the movies are are secretly, you know, connected. connected and and this movie Wish kind of makes it overt or whatever. And it was and the the articles I was reading was that it was pandering to that type of fan to, to bring it all together to make a Disney multiverse. I don't think, I don't think people were like super like attacking wish other than the one topic. But anyway, how do you feel about like the pandering? Mm. Is it unnecessary? Necessary? I know you don't get mad at it because no reason to be mad. I mean, it depends on, on how it's done, I guess. What's a good example of like a... I don't know, dude. I don't I don't watch like a lot of new stuff, so... Well, even if you don't watch new stuff, what's an old example or just a good example of like a gender, a gender flip or like a race swap or something good, where it made good sense? Good example of a gender flip. Well, I know one hypothetical is uh, Lady Gaga's Jareth from Labyrinth. I'd be so on board with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did mention that before. On the show, yeah. We um, named our we named who we thought it would be at the same time yeah, we both said I, Gaga. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> um dude, yeah, as as far as race flip, like 
like the like the little mermaid doesn't matter to me right i mean the snow white also doesn't matter well to me. i guess what i'm asking is when have they has it ever happened or occurred where they flipped a race or a gender and it enhanced the experience hmm because i feel like almost every single one is is either neutral or negative yeah i really can't think of any positive ones off the top of my head I guess over time we'll probably go to it. But earlier you mentioned thumbnails, and I wanted to ask you, how'd you like uh, our thumbnail for the D and D uh, bit? I actually don't remember what the thumbnail looked like. Oh yeah, Kevin, up. don't look it up because uh, it's going to give us a view, and I don't want to, to hurt well, our view not count. Go to our channel. Oh, this is it's the picture you drew. Okay. Yeah, but also you see all the dice background. Yes, I did. That I looks did cool, right? That, yeah. Um, I guess gender flip you did give me tips tits and the in the thumbnail <laughs> definitely looks like i got some bazongas um i probably will update that drawing anybody that's not paying attention or not <laughs> aware uh we did do a D, D campaign last week and we're going to release each episode it's like an hour long each episode maybe like 45 minutes to an hour each yeah. episode and um, it's really just us being silly. Uh, we, I, yeah. I have had interest from people, interested parties who want to join the game. Well, I, I mean, it depends on people if we this gets views, right? If this gets like twenty views, so what I was thinking, per episode, I don't think that's worth doing it again. What I was thinking though was instead of us doing a D and D campaign like film, like episodes and stuff, what if we just streamed? I mean, like on Sundays, we Sundays, we already film for like an hour for the podcast. It's not going to take me maybe 20 minutes to set everything up prior to. Um, and I can do all that before you get here. Then when you get here, we do an hour of the podcast. Ooh, who wants a longer podcast? <laughs> well, I feel so, like we should do four so hours. The thing about that is that. We, we'd, we'd have to have, you know, at least four people every time coming over here. Yeah. Well, we could do it like once a month. Yeah. And do like two hours every month. Maybe, maybe. We can talk about it. Yeah. Anything else happening in the news? Um, any Swifties out there yet? Uh, <laughs> fans? Fans of the show? Any Swifties? Um, no? <laughs> I mean, just real quick, going back to the, to the whole Wish stuff. You, you you did see I forgot what his exact words, but but Bob Iger or Eager or whatever, he he came back to Disney, right, and, and took back over. Um he did come out and say that the Disney he wants Disney to go back to making a good movie first and then having a message second. That's a good idea. So good I guess idea. he I guess he feels like there's there's too much trying to to do a message rather than the focus on making a good movie. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's part of like what I like. I'm trying to say is when you spend your whole time pandering, at some point that becomes the norm, and the moment that that becomes the norm, like what are you doing anymore? Like what? Like it? Uh, can you imagine? Oh, you know what's a really good example? Like, and I know it's stupid, but like the civil rights movement, it, 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 okay, it watch, watch no, no, look, okay, okay. it made, it made great strides, okay. you know, and I know like, we're still not there yet and all that, mm -hmm. you know, everything they want you to, all the tenants of, you know, believing in that belief structure, not weighing in one way or the other, but can you imagine if, that's not, maybe that's not a good example yeah, of right. like, uh, basically something that continues and then it just never stops. Now mm. they've created an industry around all of these marginalized groups. And Disney, I think, is taking full advantage of that because at a point in between 2020 and 2023, it was lucrative for them to do so. And so now it's like it doesn't make sense for any of these problems to go away. And they'll never go away because now it's monetized. It's like the industrial war complex. It's no different. It's literally finding a way to monetize uh, marginalized groups. Yeah, there's there's 
definitely a lot of that going on. Um, but that's, I mean, I think a lot of people that, that talk about that stuff online are trying to further their agenda on the culture wars. People have built an identity around it, <laughs> right? Like, and, and I'm a big believer that the people who try to, to further their, their kind of culture war agenda are doing so. I know I kind of just throw you on the spot. How, how, do, but... how do I phrase this? Like, there's better things to do with your time than fight the culture war, right? Right. It's it's not about black this versus is their... right or gay versus straight. This is their entire identity. This this should be about, you know, the rich people that 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 buy politicians that run our government versus us normal people middle class to poor you know what i'm talking about that's what it should be about that's what they should spend their time on kind of it kind of is that <laughs> it's it's kind of like the middle class and poor and everybody's fighting each other over <laughs> is disney putting out pandering <laughs> i i probably didn't make my point very well but no i i get you that you basically like, so to, like so to like sum summarize so like buzz year buzz light year comes out and then people get mad because what did buzz have a boyfriend or then some character in the or there was some other one of the girls did or something there was some other character that was gay or whatever yeah and it's like who who even cares yeah 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 and well it, see I'm... And, that, and that's part of the reason why you know Florida, the state of Florida and and Disney got into this big fight because, you know, Disney voiced their support for for the LGBTQ community. And then Ron DeSantis was all like, no, no, I don't like that. Let me punish Disney. Well, so I that, think it, that's a whole culture. War what thing. was it? Well, there was something more to that, though. No, there really wasn't. <laughs> there was something more to that that I remember thinking it's not so black and white as like, oh, he's just mad at LGBT. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, dude. <laughs> it was. I, didn't they say something like they put out a statement? It was it was condemning the most, him. No, maybe maybe afterwards, after he started to punish Disney, but the the first statement they ever put out was a very lukewarm it was very very lukewarm support of lgbt i don't remember and then that's when ron DeSantis got all butthurt and decided to punish disney do you remember when um do you remember when all the stuff with china happened i don't remember what stuff when was it that all the companies started putting it was when the streamer had said you know something he held up the banner and he was like china bad or something right i don't remember that and then afterwards they find him and kicked him off the team and i could be getting these facts wrong y'all correct me in the, in what, the comments what, what sport was this I, dude it was like an esports something oh, okay and so then afterwards all the companies that had language in their terms of service was like you can't use this platform to like like talk crap about china yeah see i Do you remember that I, I sound I even vaguely Sony familiar, and, and I hate that so much. It's, it, I mean, it's because they want, you know, China's money. Yeah. Like, for example, the NBA is is big into China, so they're not going to let their players, you know, talk shit about China because that means the Chinese government could just pull the plug at any moment, right? Yeah. I'm just hey, nope, y'all can't play here anymore. And that's you know another, you know. Another example of, you know, rich corporate overlords, but whatever. Well, I mean, like, back to what I was saying a second ago was, so what happens after everything is is equal? Like, in some... I think that's what people want, equality. Okay, true equality, right, right. right? But, but I'm saying what happens after everything is equal and it's it's equal billing everybody gets the same every equity equal equality everything is equal dead center who you pander to then well then i guess the corporations will be in trouble then and that's who, who gives a shit about them <laughs> well that's my point is that you don't think that we're kind of already at a point where things are more or less kind of balanced and don't get me wrong like what what I think we're at right now is 
it's less about laws and more about mindset. That's what I feel. I feel like nowadays, like people have the right to do whatever they want. You had mentioned earlier the culture war, and that's kind of what it feels like. That's, that's all it is. It's just people voicing their opinions in an echo chamber back and forth all day long. Yeah. But like somebody who wants to have an operation to become whatever they want doesn't matter to me, the individual, but they come out like what does any like my mindsets, Joe Schmo's mindset, Joe conservative, Joe liberal, what does their opinion matter as long as that person is able to do it? I mean, there's, there's the people that kind of make their living acting like they're being persecuted all the time. Yeah. And I feel like there's people on both sides. That oh, absolutely. That, <laughs> that, I, no, absolutely. That, that try to play the permanent victim. Absolutely. Uh, or the, uh, Okay, so, but again, though, right, like, is that not, do you feel like that's where we're at right now, where it's really not as bad as everybody's making it seem on both sides? I don't, I don't think it's as bad as people make it seem. Just that the, the media has this habit of, of like giving these people megaphones. Oh, yeah. And soapboxes when they really don't need to. Like the vocal minority. I mean, yeah, that phrase exactly. exists. The vocal for a minority. Reason. Like basically, like straight up, the news will report on something that somebody said on Twitter. Yeah. And they're just giving that person a huge platform. And it's like, it's like half of right, Elon Musk like who, in the news. Who really is this person and why should we even care? Yeah. Well, I mean, I know Elon Musk is a little more prominent of a public figure than just Joe Schmo. But yeah, basically every time Elon tweets or Trump tweets or, or who else, who's a good example, like anybody says anything, they just want to vilify the opinion of and use it to tear down. It's character tear down is what it is. It, well, that that's like, I guess on a popular scale, like in the public opinion, but um, yep. The algorithm gonna have a lot of fun <laughs> with this one. They don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Watch eat more uh, chicken. I don't know. <laughs> oh, wait. No, that's pro Chick-fil-A, right? That's a Chick-fil-A ad? Dude, I'm pro Chick-fil-A. They got good chicken. Dude, that chicken is good, dude. Oh. Um, it's it's like... Um, so, so recently, Elon, he said, you know, F straight up, F the advertisers. I'm super... I like that mentality. <laughs> um, but... but so basically, ever since he bought Twitter, Twitter has been a sinking ship, right? No, it's, I it's thought been, that that's not true. I oh, thought... it's been it's been losing money. He he bought it for like forty four billion. But aren't the users up? And and maybe maybe it's worth like twenty billion, maybe, and that still might be overvalued. Yeah, but aren't the users up? I don't know about that. I don't know what what Twitter. I don't. I don't. Know know. I, don't I don't. I truly don't know. But I I think I think you really could go on the internet and, and and really see that Twitter has been losing money. And now with him saying F advertisers, you know, these advertisers are, you know, using their free speech to not advertise on Twitter. Or... And, and he's probably trying to blame Twitter's failure on them. I think he... Uh, this could be conspiracy theory in me, right? Okay. So uh, devil's advocate, conspiracy theorist. Maybe what he's trying to do is eliminate the advertisers that don't align with what they consider to be the free thinkers. And instead, they can control who advertises on their site. I think the problem that Twitter is having is that they're not getting enough advertisers and the advertisers they are getting are shitty. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, as a as a, a sometimes user of Twitter or X, if you want to be uh, accurate. Uh, so I'll tell you what their problem is. Okay. Their problem is that I get on there to find out what like five or six people are doing, right? Mm -hmm. And to post, you know, super serial stuff occasionally, because honestly, I'm so tired of it. I can't even stand that website. I didn't like it before he had it. I don't like it now. I think it, it's just, I can't stand it, but, but, Every time I get on there, they need to stop letting Hideo Kojima post 42 <laughs> posts a day of nonsense. And he never puts a description, dude. Can you imagine that? He ne Use Instagram. 
Why you got to be, you know, blowing up Twitter all day long? I mean, Hideo Kojima kind of has always needed an editor. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, like, and, and this is coming from somebody, anybody who's listening, who's thinking, oh, oh, he don't know what he's talking about. I'm like, I'm a bigger Hideo Kojima fan than any of you. And I'm saying, damn, that boy needs an editor for his posts online all day long. It's like check out this fan art from somewhere and also check out this, you know, line from a book that I read once, you know, like, Hey, Oh, check this out. It's a picture of a dog or, Oh, check this out. It's old metal gear concept art from Yoji Shinkawa. And I'm sitting there thinking, why are you posting metal gear stuff? Kojima? <laughs> I know it only took occupied 30 years of your life, but Konami's watching. Don't even get me started on Konami, dude. All right, what's wrong with them? They're still garbage. Yeah. Um, the Master Collection, the Metal Gear Master Collection came out, and they, so me, you know, average gamer guy, right? Nothing special. Mm -hmm. My pro days are behind me. Yeah. Um, I'm sitting there playing, trying my best to enjoy it. You know, like I've told you many times, like when I play a new game, I struggle, but then my memory overtakes and like yeah, I can as, handle. As, as we discussed, you're having trouble with Metal Gear Solid 1. Yeah. And so I, but then I find out that there's like all these problems and latency issues. And what was the big one I saw that, oh, this, these games are not remasters. They're just ports of the last remaster. Okay. And I was like, it kind of hurts my heart a little. Well, I mean, that's who Konami is now. I mean, what, what what's like the last like good game they actually put out? Metal Gear Solid 5. And that's been... How many years now? 15. So check it out, uh, audience. This is what we're going to do. We need to get this channel blown up so that, uh, I was going to say Super Serial, so that Team Triple Horn can uh, make up, build up enough money that we can try and buy Metal Gear Solid <laughs> off of Konami. That's the plan. We would need at least like a billion dollars for that. You don't think we can do it? No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> How about we manifest Destiny, bruh? Actually, speaking of manifesting, like I watched, a, I watched a clip of Jim Carrey, and Jim Carrey's talking about like how he had this story about how he prayed to God that he wanted a bike, but you know he didn't do anything to get the bike, and mm -hmm. then his buddy all of a sudden puts him his name in a raffle for a bike, and he gets his bike, oh, and he man. was like, "Oh, I manifested that bike," and I'm sitting there thinking, "Quit telling people that, <laughs> you know, because you got kids growing up now." Like and I, I used to be well, one of them. Wasn't that the whole thing with that with that help help um help yourself book? What's it? What's the term? Um, self help self help book, like the secret or whatever. You have to manifest your, yeah your wants and desires or whatever. And, and I'm all for that, but you also got to be working towards yeah. it a little. Because yeah. I know when the show first started, I was like, I'm just gonna manifest. <laughs> and I'm not. I'm gonna spend less time you gotta, editing. You gotta, you, yeah, you gotta put in the work for sure. <laughs> and so Jim Carrey saying that that was the first thing I thought was like, quit telling people to manifest their dreams when the some people, you know, we need to start telling kids like, hey, manifest getting your job done. You is that, know, is that what you tell Penny or what? Hell yes. <laughs> like I'm all for dreaming, but at the same time, like we've always been like, you know, do be as creative as you want. I'll come up with whatever silliness like, think about it and all the time you've known me if i say i'm gonna do something i do it if i if i say i'm gonna open a, a comic book store with nothing <laughs> then we do it nothing except an, an aquaman blammo <laughs> yeah then we had two blammos i don't remember who the other one was we sold one okay <laughs> but anyway uh but also i, I want to make a movie yeah, made a movie i sure. uh, want to start a youtube channel i uh, give john a little bit of that credit though because john yeah. definitely hit or asked was looking for a guest and i was like yo dog i'll do it it's that famous metal gear story y'all gotta watch an old episode to find that story <laughs> though but um but i'm serious like it's cool to manifest but it's also really cool you know my favorite quote is to counter the manifest one huh. um here you bring something up while i look it up um what should i bring up um oh remember we were going to look at um at your spotify later Ooh, i was so happy i'm on uh i'm on youtube music i think youtube music also has a rap thing but i can't i don't think i've been able to locate it yet all right check it out <laughs> 
before we get into the Spotify uh, recap or unwind or wrap or whatever you want to call it, this is the my counter to the manifest thing, right? Okay. All men dream, but not equally. Those who dream by night in the dusty recesses of their minds awake to find that it was vanity. But the dreamers of the day are dangerous men, that they may act their dreams with open eyes to make it possible. This I did. Who was that? That's from Lawrence of Arabia. No. T.S. Lawrence or whatever. I've never seen it. But that's it, bro. That's the counter to manifest, which is like, yeah, sure. When you go to bed at night and you dream and let me paraphrase it right for the for the for the, mm-hmm. the, the new age. Yeah. When you dream at night, it's super fun. But when you wake up and do the stuff, you know, I mm-hmm. sound like the coach from uh, Big Mouth. You ever watch Big Mouth? No, I haven't. Dude, not. it's the best show. God, it's the best show. Bobby's watched it, but yeah. I can see that being like a truly awkward show for her. I mean, I am a Nick Kroll fan, but I don't know. Something about that show doesn't appeal to me. I'm a John Mulaney fan, which is why I watched it. He's funny, too. I love John Mulaney. I like his voice. He sounds exactly like that. Yeah, his his, his last stand up he did when he was talking yeah. about his stint in rehab was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's like he was like he was worried that, that nobody would that people would recognize him and then no one recognized yeah. him and he was worried that nobody would recognize him. Uh, um side note, right? So Spotify, we'll get back on Spotify. Okay. Uh my top five uh my top five individual cat my top category was pop. And it's been pop for the last couple years, and that makes me so sad. Well, you listen to, like, a lot of different stuff. But... I listen to, like, everything. Yeah. Like, I straight up listen to all types of music. And I don't, like, I'm not shy about that. Like, it, I don't care what it is. I listen to it. I don't know how to find on, on YouTube. My... my top artists were Gorillas, naturally. Makes sense. Lonely Island. The Classic. action design, Tsunami Bomb, and oh, who's this out of left field? Nobuo Uematsu. <laughs> oh, Final Fantasy? Yeah, because I made that <laughs> playlist for Jack with all the all the Final Fantasy music. Aww. And so he just lays it whenever I have him, you know, like just me and him. And I'm trying to put him to sleep or something. I'll play like, I call it my Xanarkin playlist, and I just play a bunch of music for him. I had 31,000 minutes listened, and I was like in the top 10% of listeners I was in the top 0.5% of listeners for Gorillas, though. That made me feel good. But hold on here. Hey, listen. So y'all got my list of of top artists, right? Gorillas, uh, Lonely Island, Tsunami Bomb, Action Design, Nobuo Nobu Uematsu. Mm-hmm. But here's my top songs, okay? Number five was Benzy Box, which, side note from Danger Doom. Oh, yeah, that's... That's uh yeah that's Danger Doom yeah that's Dude. not that's not even any of your yeah your top five that has that song that's no a, that's an old song dude that song no lie has been in my top five for like the last five years okay I absolutely that's love that song. song I sing the shit out of it but anyway Seven Nation Army from the that's, White Stripes that's also not in your top five artists I love White Stripes and I love Jack White and I love that song but I don't know why it's number four so number three is Shiny from Moana. Also not on your top five. <laughs> yeah. Number two is Being All Right from Tsunami Bomb. Okay. That's the only song in my top five songs from a band in my top five bands. And then number one, can you guess? Throw out a guess. Um, number one. Um Invincible from Street Fighter 4. Ooh, that would have been a good one. <laughs> I actually do think I might have that on there. Um I thought it was going to definitely be uh, Aeroplane by the Sea from Neutral Milk Hotel. Shout out to all my Neutral Milk Hotel okay. fans. But it, it ended up being How Far I'll Go from Moana. <laughs> Dude, I don't know why so many Moana songs are on my damn playlist. Yeah, I'm bringing up mine right now. It's the... <laughs> Going super slow. Well, while while it's loading, um, I follow the lead singer of Tsunami Bomb and Action Design and oh, her new band. My top five was Go for it, go for it. Was MC Chris, <laughs> Weird Al, Ghost, Bloodhound Gang, and Gunship. I'm I'm a fan of four of those. Nice. That's funny because I didn't get into like MC Chris until like later in the year. He's a cool guy. 
What does it have the individual songs? Um, hard to fast forward through this. It's just going on its own. Ah, uh, but um, the lead singer of Action Design and Tsunami Bomb. Anybody who most people probably know like, Tsunami like Bomb. Girl, right? Yeah. Um. Oh my God, Emily Whitehurst. Uh, she used to go by Agent M, but um, anyway, I follow her on Instagram and stuff and. And she had posted her survival guide because she's in a current band. Uh, it's kind of like her and just whoever she needs, I guess. It's called Survival Guide. And she posted like the results. And I wanted to get on her on her thing and tell her like, hey, dude, like because she was thank thanking everybody who listened to her music for Survival Guide. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Yo, I just did the Spotify rap and I had Action Design and Tsunami Bomb. And I do have a lot of Survival Guide songs on my playlist, obviously, my like songs. But I mean, I guess I guess they just didn't hit the rotation as much to yeah. make any impact. But um I wanted to tell her, like, I got two out of your three bands. Do I get credit? <laughs> <laughs> but then I didn't even post anything because I was like, I don't know if she's like angry or I know she doesn't uh, what did she she donates her money from Tsunami Bomb, or it's, I don't know if she still even, does. It's not even very much though, right? Yeah, it was like a six hundred dollar check, but she donated it to like some women's battered battered women's chatter charity. Okay, and um, they could use the money. Yeah, and so I thought it was funny because I think that's a statement she's making. Maybe hmm. like uh, they were mistreated. I think that was part of the reason why they broke up or she left or whatever. Well, I mean, when The Crown broke up back in the day, I mean, they've gotten back together since. But their reasoning was, I mean, they would end tours and they would basically just be broke and their instruments would be falling apart. Oh, shit. So I don't know if that was due to, like, bad management or what, but... They needed to play less rough. Maybe. Metal bands, bro. Yep. Last um, week's episodes? Last week's episodes. Guess who did very well for us i'm gonna guess uh we came up with the that. guess who short <laughs> we came up with that while while penny and your mom were playing guess who we were just calling out outrageous bullcrap yeah you did come up with the diwali line did i i, I think i'm pretty remember. sure it was you that said diwali okay no wait was it you or was it me i don't remember there was one character in the game that was like obviously indian <laughs> the <looking>. only indian <laughs> And that's that, you know, classic kind of racial humor that we love from The Office. Yeah, it was pretty lighthearted, I would say. Yeah. We're over 10,000 on... Oh, uh, we are? On, uh, not on YouTube, on uh, Instagram. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And we didn't get as many likes. I think we got more likes on YouTube. But we got more comments on... Dude! Oh, well, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Did, did Bobbin like it? Did he text you back? He never messaged okay. me back. <laughs> He's mad. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, like... Guys, I hope y'all liked that and enjoyed it. And any yeah. anybody watching the show that came from that short, if this yeah, if this welcome. is your if this is your first podcast with us. You, you can know. tell uh, in the, from the beginning of this podcast with the wish stuff and the Disney <laughs> <laughs> that we're super sensitive. Yeah, but uh, that one did really well. The D and D one is doing okay. Um. I stand. Not, yeah, it's not that great, but <laughs> I stand by what I've said in the past about D and D campaigns. It's kind of like the sport of baseball. I love to play, or I did love to play baseball. I don't like to watch baseball. Yeah. So that, that I think that was the problem with our D and D campaign was we have to be cognizant of our audience that's watching. And it's kind of hard because because after we recorded it, I went and watched um, one of those episodes of uh, Critical Role. Mm -hmm. Is that the one with the voice actors? Yeah. Okay. And I've never watched that before, not once my entire life, because I don't watch people play D and D. I think Bobby watches it. Um, she a fan though? I think she is. Yeah. So one thing I noticed right off the bat. Um, also, side note, does anybody, let me know in the comments if anybody has a friend who says right off the back. God, I hate that shit. Dude. <laughs> Art, Art like does that. that. Okay. Right off the back. I think Andrew used to do that too. Was it Andrew? Or hit the, I don't remember. Anyway, 
um, the guy who who was like DMing or dungeon lording or whatever, okay. he definitely was kind of the the what's the word uh, the driving force like okay. like but also everybody on there is you know relatively skilled at what they're doing like in terms of personality and like yeah you know staying active and not letting there be dead air and so i i dig it yeah i mean i think if we end up do you know playing more it'll get better as it goes along like this was my very first time playing and and it'll be as if we do play more it'll be easier for us to like kind of improvise and role play and do all that kind of stuff yeah but it did feel like greg was disinterested it was it was kind of it was kind of stiff i think a little bit yeah um and and yeah i mean there were some kind of slow points like when i would have to look through all my papers to find what spell i'm gonna do and (laughs) yeah i was sitting there and i was like oh (laughs) let me edit this and i and i straight up like didn't i like, I guess I didn't know how spells worked to begin with, like how many you can cast or Like whatever. dailies and all that? Yeah. So. I say dailies because that's what I was told the very first time I ever played. And anybody who knows me, it's word association. So someone says daily, and that's it. That's that's my word yeah, forever. You, you can only use, like, certain spells, like a certain number of times between long rests. And that's that's why we had that rest in the, in the cave, so we could get back okay. our spells. <laughs> uh you threw the tent up right I can we should be able to throw leo, that tent oh no because you leo Mun's tiny hut yeah <laughs> so but, it, so it, wait don't spoil so you well i was gonna i was gonna explain how that how it works like so it lets stuff out but it doesn't let stuff in i guess that's oh, how okay. it works i say we find a way or to it do the opposite? One, one or the other no, it has to let stuff. It keeps has to keep stuff out. Can't remember. But um, I say that we get find a way to get a game going where we can incorporate an audience member every game. So like like you're playing Necromancer, and every time you summon a ghost, we hit up someone from the chat <laughs> to be the to be the well, to roll. That would be hard to do, but it'd be kind of funny. No, it would be kind of easy. Cause we just be like, "Hey you, <laughs> hey you." Have we respond. got any comments on the on the D and D episode? Anyone mm, say anything? I don't think so. I've I've gotten a lot of friends message me and be like, "Oh, that was funny. I thought this or that was funny." And then I got one buddy who like wants to play, and but the problem is that if we're gonna DM in the future, I feel like we need. I I like Greg's version of DMing. Be- but I don't know if it serves like an audience well. Because like he never stopped us at any point from doing silly crap. Yeah, he was like, you can't do that. Never. never he didn't care. Yeah. yeah, he never told us no. He never, like, the only time he said no was when Marty tried to walk over a wall. <laughs> but um, But for the most part, like, I like the way Greg DMs. I do. But it's not very exciting. Well... I mean, we were only fighting goblins. We didn't get to really do a bunch of story stuff. Dude, the story is the most boring part. No, I, I think the story is the good part. I don't. I think fighting goblins is the is the least is the most boring part for the audience. Yeah, that's true. I guess we should find a way to make. Oh, I know what can make the battles go quicker. We just attack and not use spells. Well, that works for you. <laughs> All I have is a dagger, so... <laughs> you know what else would have made it go quick was if somebody... lit For later on, spoiler alert, or or hint for future episode, uh, somebody needs night vision. <laughs> yeah. Because that would have sped it up a lot. Well, I feel like there is probably a spell for that, but, I mean, I didn't take it, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, if I could pick my spells over i would definitely do some things different but whatever speaking of if only we could go back uh and do things differently we did have somebody comment on the super serial goodbye super serial short Which one the christmas that? from last year oh really yeah okay. so uh, recently or just like two days ago okay so shout out to that guy i don't remember his name it was like musadi or something like that all right but um he had commented he's he put totally underrated oh well thank and you and i thank you, yeah bro. so i com- i messaged back I, I commented i was like dude 
when this short came out, this got no love at such a pivotal moment yeah. for our channel. And so, uh, so hearing that, thank you, dude. I appreciate it. It warms my heart. And he said, no, man, like everything was great. The editing, the, the, the style, the this. He said the random presence. And I was like, dude, God, this guy gets it. And I hope it's a real account and it's not some bot or something. No, it, that doesn't sound like, like a bot. But when um, he put that totally underrated, <laughs> dude, I swear to you, dude, I had like a biggest smile on my face. <laughs> We're vindicated. Um, yeah. We are planning another Christmas sketch, I think. I think it's going to have to be a sketch. We are planning. I don't know if we want to spoil it or if we just want to hold 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 on to it. But we are planning no, a, let's hold on to it. a, let's hold a on Christmas to it. sketch that that longtime viewers, I think, will, will like. We're also talking about doing a Christmas song. Yeah, that too. Um, I think that might just be a short. Yeah. I think that might just be a short. But only because, like, I feel like it's fun to ramble. Like, that rambling I did a little while ago, it was fun. But it was, like, you know, maybe 20 seconds fun. Yeah. And so I think that could be fun. I, I just like the idea of doing dumb Christmas songs. I also like the idea of doing, a like, a dumb Christmas song, ironically, and then it being super successful and we sell it on iTunes and make some money off of it. That's, that's definitely a pipe dream there. But yeah, I, uh, I think I think I the, manifest. I think the Christmas song idea was funny. I think the, the sketch we're thinking of is funny. The the sketch you came up with last week, we were both laughing about the oh, one from the gym. God, dude, I want to do that. That, so one, bad. that one sounds really funny. Also, we need to finish our um, the mentalist. <laughs> what was what was it called? <laughs> the uh, Mind hunters, yeah, the mind hunters. <laughs> there you go. We need to do that. We, we need to do the Yeti one. We got a, we got a lot of stuff to look forward to. Uh, please stay tuned. Also, uh, I guess we can wrap it up. Okay, yeah. Um, it's been, I think it's been an hour, but uh, I have to set my timer. My bad. Anybody still watching? Let us know in the comments. Uh, stuff like uh, topics people like to hear about. Because right now what we've been doing is just kind of going over trending stuff and and just poking at things that kind of interest us and yeah. just kind of stay talking. I, I feel like we did pretty good about talking in this one without getting too distracted. But um, Ooh, here's a, a trending topic. Um, Beaver Creek Alpine Skiing World Cup. Beaver Creek. Isn't that from Halo? I don't know, man. I think Beaver Creek was like the name of like the best map in the first Halo. Well, besides Blood Gulch. Um, also trending is mortgage interest rates today. Okay. Ooh. We can talk about that next time if y'all want. Ooh. Or we could go over uh, why Semi-Pro is such an underrated movie. Yep, I love Semi-Pro. Dude, uh, Jackie Moon in that movie, Will Ferrell's character, that's my spirit animal. <laughs> Jackie Moon. Okay. That's me in real life, dude. Is it not? Constantly um, trying to be successful at all these different avenues and venues gets like marginally good at one thing. No, but Jackie is also kind of stupid, but I don't feel like you're stupid. <laughs> he's, he's stupid he's, in his own way. He's not stupid. He is, is the word affable? I don't know. I think that's the word affable. He's very, um, what's the word? He can't be stupid if he runs like a business. He puts... Well, the, the tropics were kind of failing, weren't they? And then they weren't going to be led into the NBA until they won that game. See, that, that's how I feel, though. Like, I he, feel like no matter... A failing business. No matter... Well, hey, I'm good at doing failing businesses. <laughs> but anyway, uh, y'all take it easy. And if she's easy, take her twice. You want to say, throw out a funny line at, at the end? Give us a funny um, sound effect, Kevin. Boy, Wait. Boy, yo, 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 yo. <laughs>